Hey, eighth graders. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the issues of the 1970s. Uh, we've already discussed the first major issue, uh, the Watergate scandal and the resignation of President Richard Nixon in 1974. The remainder of the decade of the 1970s happened under the administrations of two presidents, Gerald Ford, who assumed the office after Nixon, and Jimmy Carter, who managed to defeat President Ford in 1976, uh, presidential election. Uh, each of these leaders experienced both highs and lows during their time in office. As you play the video, watch for the on-screen clues along the way to help you fill in the blanks on your worksheet. Let's begin with Gerald Ford. Mr. Ford was the only president in U.S. history to have achieved the office without having his name appear on a presidential ballot. He became vice president after Richard Nixon's first vice president resigned due to a scandal of his own that was unrelated to Watergate. President Nixon appointed Ford as vice president, knowing that Ford was well respected by both political parties and would easily be approved by the Senate, as was required by the Constitution. The low points in Mr. Ford's presidency began almost immediately as he became president in the wake of his predecessor's resignation. Then, in an effort to move the nation forward, President Ford signed a formal pardon, releasing Nixon from the burden of having to defend himself against criminal charges related to Watergate. Ford lost support from many Americans for pardoning Nixon. Any confidence voters may have had in President Ford's leadership was further damaged by the failing economy. While the, econ uh, the economic problems had carried over from the Nixon era, Ford's efforts to bring them under control were not seen as successful. Inflation had hurt the economy, so Ford proposed a campaign to, quote, whip inflation now, or win, W-I-N. The WIN program asked Americans to cut spending and energy use, but the effort failed. President Ford did have one high point when he successfully negotiated the Helsinki Accords. He signed this declaration in an attempt to improve relations between the communist bloc and the West, meaning the United States. Unfortunately, this action was not enough to help President Ford win the 1976 election. With the election of President Jimmy Carter in 1976, many thought life would improve for Americans. But the high points of President Carter's time in office were mainly in the area of foreign policy. For example, his negotiation of uh, the Panama Canal Treaties in 1977 improved U.S. relations with Panama as the U.S. agreed to give control of the canal to Panama in the year 2000, which ultimately did happen. Then, with the Camp David Accords, Carter managed to negotiate a peace treaty between Egypt and Israel, which ended 30 years of conflict and helped to reduce tensions in the Middle East. At home, however, President Carter was not so successful. His low points included clashes with Congress in 1977, which caused shortages of oil and natural gas and forced schools and businesses to close. Carter wanted Americans to conserve energy. He wanted to cut oil imports, increase production of oil and natural gas at home, and promote alternative energy sources. But he struggled to convince Congress to follow his plan. Another low point for President Carter was the Iran hostage crisis. When Muslim leaders in Iran overthrew the Iranian Shah, or the, the leader in Iran, uh, the U.S. allowed him uh, to come here to escape the Iranians uh, to escape the, the, the new leaders of Iran. The Iranians struck back, though, uh, by overrunning the U.S. Embassy in Iran, and they took 52 Americans hostage for 44, uh, I'm sorry, 444 days. All of Carter's efforts to free the hostages, including secret missions, failed. In 1980, Carter lost re-election to Ronald Reagan, the hostages were released the same day Reagan was inaugurated as president. This concludes our video lesson on the issues of the 1970s. If you missed any of the blanks on the worksheet, please go back through the video to find them, as this will be the only 
worksheet that you'll be required to do for this lesson.